Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about matrix frameworks and learn how to build one in Notion. If you're new to the channel, my name is Karina and I'm a full-time Notion creator and consultant. A matrix framework is basically a visual representation of qualitative data in a quadrants format. So you basically take a square or a rectangle and assign a decision criteria to each of its axes, and then you divide into four or more equal parts with each quadrant representing an action or a decision. The decision criteria could be, for example, effort, impact, cost, or risk. And the number of quadrants that your matrix will have will depend on how many levels you assign to each decision criteria. So for example, for importance, you might decide to class it only as important or not important, whereas for risk, you might have three levels, that being low, medium, and high. The purpose of using a matrix-based framework is to help with decision-making, whether that's helping you prioritize your to-do list and decide which tasks to tackle first, or making much more strategic decisions like deciding which markets your company should enter next. There are many matrix-based frameworks out there, which you probably have already heard of, but in case you haven't, I want to give you some examples. And number one, we have the BCG matrix, which is also known as a product portfolio matrix. And it basically takes market share and product growth as its decision criteria to help companies formulate strategies about the direction of their product or their business units. Number two, we have the Eisenhower matrix, which takes into consideration importance and urgency of tasks to help you prioritize your to-do list. And number three, we have the nine box grid, which helps companies evaluate their talent pool based on performance and potential of their staff. And number four, we have the impact effort matrix, which as the name indicates, takes into consideration impact and effort to help you prioritize tasks, projects, or your product roadmap. So today I'm gonna to show you two different ways that you can build a matrix framework in Notion using databases. And for our examples, we're gonna use two specific frameworks. We're gonna use the Eisenhower matrix, which is a two by two matrix, and the impact effort matrix, which is a three by three matrix. So let's jump into Notion now. So our first method for building a matrix framework in Notion involves the creation of a database that will then be displayed in a board view with grouped properties. And for our example, we're gonna use the impact effort Effort matrix applied to a product roadmap example. So if you look here on our right hand side, I have a little visual aid to help us visualize how the matrix is supposed to look like. So on your X axis, you can see that you have the effort as the decision criteria being classed as low, medium or high and near Y axis, you have the impact of the feature, which can also be classed as low, medium and high. Now, how do we interpret then the results of each of these quadrants? So if we look at the low effort and then low, medium and high impact features, we would class a low effort, medium impact or low effort, high impact as our first priority. This should be a very first iteration in what we want to tackle first. Next, you look at the features that have either a medium or high effort, but that still have very high impact. So with the medium effort, high impact, high effort and high impact, this would be our iteration number two, these would be at P2s. And then lastly, you would want to tackle the medium effort, high effort, medium impact, and this would be your iterations number three. And then everything at the bottom, basically anything with the low impact, you probably want to rethink these. You might not want to actually be spending the time, the resources and the effort to build features that might not have enough impact for your customers. So how do we build this in Notion? Well, let's start by creating a database. And if you know me by now, I always like to start with the table view because I find it easier to edit. So let's create a database by clicking on for slash database in line. And by default, this will give us a table view. We can give a name to our table. Let's call it a product roadmap. And our first property is going to be our features. And we're going to create a list of our features for our roadmap. Now that we have our list of features, what we will do next is to delete this tax property that is always created by default. What we will want to create instead is our decision criteria properties, which are impact, which should be a select type property with the options low, medium, and high. In fact, 
we should call it high impact and medium impact and low impact. The reason why I recommend that we actually give it the full name, don't just leave it at low, medium and high, is because our other decision criteria is effort, which is gonna have the exact same option. So to make it easier later on to actually group our properties and visualize it in the right way, I recommend you actually give it the full name, meaning low effort, medium effort, high effort. Now that we have our property options created, what I would also recommend is that you color code it accordingly. So a high impact product feature is actually a good thing. So I'm going to mark it as green. My medium impact, I'm going to mark it as yellow. And my low impact, I would mark it as red. Now we're going to do the same thing for our next decision criteria, which is effort, which is also a select type property with the options low effort, medium effort, I can't type, and high effort. Same thing, I want to color code it accordingly, except this time a high effort is going to be red because that's not a good thing when it comes to feature development. Our medium effort is going to be yellow and our low effort is going to be green. Now, as we head back to our database, all that we have to do is to select the impact level and the effort level for each of our properties. So I'm gonna quickly complete this for all of our features and so we can move on to creating our matrix. And there we go. Now we have our product roadmap database with each of its features with an impact level and an effort level assigned to it. So what we will want to do next is to create a linked view of this database in a board format. So in order to do that, I'm going to move our literal visual aid down to the bottom. And here under matrix, I'm going to create a linked view of this database. So I'm going to click forward slash linked view of database and I'm going to select our product roadmap. What I'll want to do next is move myself out of the way and then go and select my layout and change it from table to board. I'm also going to hide our title here to make this a little bit more interesting. So as we saw before, what we want on our X axis is our effort. So I want to group our Kanban view not by impact, but rather group it by effort. And in order to create a matrix, what you will need to do is to create a subgroup. And in our subgroup, we're going to select the impact. Now, I want to change things around a little bit so that they make sense and look like our visual aid, which means our low effort will come first then we'll have our medium effort and our high effort. Same with our impact properties. We'll have our high impact first, then our medium impact, then our low impact. So in order to change our subgrouping order, I'm going to change it here, which is the other option. Rather than dragging it directly in the Kanban itself, you can also go to the property section and change it accordingly. And that is it. What you're looking at is already a matrix where that replicates the design that we had below. You have your high impact features with low effort required. So this is your number one priority is feature number one, as well as your medium impact and low effort. Then here at the top features three and four with medium effort and high effort, but high impact would be your P2s. And then your feature five, feature seven with medium effort, high effort and medium impact would be your P3s. And everything at the bottom that has a low impact would be recommended for you to rethink if you really want to incorporate these items into your roadmap. And that is it. This is a very, very simple way to create a matrix. It's very easy to manage as well. You can just grab each of the cards and drag it to where you want it to be. If you want to create a new feature, just click on create new. If you already know the effort and the impact that it has, you can create it already in the respective quadrant. 
So our second method for creating a matrix-based framework in Notion involves the use of linked views in a gallery format to display our information. And for this example, we're going to use our Eisenhower matrix, which helps us prioritize our tasks based on their importance and their urgency. Again, we have a little visual aid here on the right-hand side where you can see the four quadrants that result from this two by two matrix. And it's a two by two matrix because each decision criteria only has two parameters. It's either urgent, not urgent, important or not important. So how do we create this? We're gonna repeat a similar process that we did for the impact effort matrix. We're gonna start by creating a table database. No need for capitals, but that's okay. I'm gonna name it Eisenhower. And our first property is going to be all tasks. So we will add our several tasks to this database. Next, we're going to delete our tags property because we will not need it and rather create our decision criteria, which is importance which will be a select type property with importance being important or not important. Next, we're going to create our urgency property, which is also a select type property with the options urgent and not urgent. And lastly, what we need to do is obviously assign a level of importance and urgency to each of our tasks. Now that we have our tasks duly categorized in terms of importance and urgency, what we will do next is to create linked views of this table and filter those views for each of the quadrants. So let me show you what I mean. First, I'm going to grab our visual aid out of the way, I'm going to start by building a linked view. Again, this is very similar to what we did for the previous method, but this time we will want to visualize our data, not in a board format, but rather in a gallery view. We do not want to see any page content because there is none. And what we will do next is to filter these results by importance and urgency to create our first quadrant, which is the do now, do these tasks first, which are the ones that are high urgency and high importance. So I'm going to filter it by important and I'm going to filter by urgent. I'm gonna hide this database title, I'm gonna hide our filters and I'm going to rename this view to do now, which is what quadrant number one represents. And now I'm going to repeat the process for each of the other quadrants. I'm going to create another linked view of the same database. I'm going to change it to a gallery view. I'm going to show none as the card preview and I'm going to filter it by important, but not urgent save it, hide my filters, hide my database title, and rename this view schedule. Another way to go about it is to just duplicate um, this view and then change your filter. So for our next quadrant, the delegate quadrant, we will have urgent but not important tasks. So we'll change it from important to not important and urgent from not urgent to urgent. We save our filters, we hide our filters, and we rename this view to delegate. And lastly, we will create our don't do, which we have not important tasks and not urgent tasks. Save it, hide our filters, and rename this view as well. Now this doesn't look quite like the matrix yet. So what we will need to do next is to actually rearrange these linked database views to form a quadrants format. Now you cannot actually drag a database to put it next to each other and form two columns. So we're gonna need a little hack to tackle this one. So what we're going to do is to create a new line and we're going to create two columns. 
And now I can drag my do now database into that first column, take my schedule and put it right next to it, which is where I want my um, quadrants to be. Then I take my delegate, put it under do now, and I will take my don't do and put it under schedule. This is now starting to look like an actual matrix, but it's still pretty hard to visualize because they don't have any color and they kind of blend with each other. So what we will do next is to give a color to each of these linked views of the databases, which are our quadrants. Again, you can't just simply click on a database and select a color. You can see that there's no option in here to do that. So we're going to need a little hack again. So Similar to what we've done before, what we're actually going to do is to create a different block type. In this case, we're going to create a toggle. And then we're going to grab our first database and drop it inside the toggle. Now we're going to select the toggle block and give it a color. So in this case, we want it to be green. And as you can see, the table inside the toggle now actually has a color. But what we can do to take this even further is to convert this block back into a text block so we don't actually see the toggle. Now we can drag this database, put it back into our matrix, and there we go. We have a colored database representing our first quadrant. And we basically we need to repeat the process for the other four quadrants. And there we go. Now we have an easy to view and easy to interpret matrix that shows us easily what we should be tackling first in terms of our to do list. You could apply this link databases method to the impact effort matrix as well. But for the sake of our example, I chose to apply different methods to the different frameworks. And that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Notion tutorials. If you want to grab the two frameworks that we looked at today, there's a link down in the description to download the templates completely for free. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.